This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed. Blessed. Harriet, here, sitting in the, the back row, if you ask her how she is, she's going to tell you, I'm blessed. Um, it's a word that we use a lot, and sometimes uh, we have one meaning for it and sometimes another. When we read about the Beatitudes and we hear, blessed are, sometimes we take a whole different direction for it. In this service, later we will remember Blessed Mary and Blessed Paul the Hermit, which makes us think that blessed really is only for those who attain to some sort of sainthood. But the gospel tells us, blessed are the poor in spirit. The gospel tells us, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both the poor in spirit and those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. If you were into diagramming your gospel, you could diagram that and you would see that the is the kingdom of God at the beginning and the is the kingdom of God at the end of that section kind of encircle all the other parts which talk about later rewards and everything else. In a modern bulletin, we'd have something in bold face print to tell you it's important, right? In those days, one of the ways they let people know something was important and connected was by repeating a part of it. So in this case, the first verse is, theirs is the kingdom, and near the last verse is, theirs is the kingdom. And all the others are within that. And so it gives us this circle of blessedness. But the key is, is that this isn't blessedness that comes from them doing something. This is blessedness that comes from a gift of God. God has blessed these people. These aren't people who went to a course to find out how I can be blessed. And now they're running around being poor in spirit. Or people who are running around being persecuted. I mean, it's interesting. There, there might be a market for that. <laughs> I really want to get in that program that allows me to let everybody know how persecuted I am and have a reason for doing it. Um, being blessed is something that is done by God for us. And it is not about a judgment on necessarily the quality of every part of the character of these people. It's about these are people... And this, this idea of this circle means that God's kingdom and what it takes to be blessed in God's reign is a very wide circle. And it includes lots of people. And it doesn't necessarily include people who would even think of themselves in that way. For how many people who are poor in spirit run around thinking of themselves as poor in spirit? By and large, if they do that, they've probably have already blown it, right? If they start thinking, yeah, I'm really poor in spirit today, you know that uh, they haven't a clue about the real poverty of spirit. All of this is really important um, if you've ever been one of those people who didn't know if you fit, if you didn't know if you were included. If you didn't know if the circle of God's love and the circle of God's gracious reign was large enough to include you. Now, we talk a lot about people who are kind of marginalized, people who are, who are homeless, for example. Uh, stray, uh, gay and lesbian people have been marginalized. Transgender people get marginalized. There's all sorts of people who get marginalized. Sometimes, I'm told, people who prescribed to being Republicans sometimes feel marginalized when I preach. <laughs> A 
and I, frankly, there are other political persuasions who also have felt marginalized from time to time by that. But the point is, is that when Jesus begins to take his disciples apart and he begins to teach them about the things they will need to know to follow him, to preach on his behalf, to lead a community of faithful when he's gone, the first thing he does is he takes them apart and he lets them know about this circle of blessedness. Blessedness. Now, I have to mention that this idea of this whole inclusio thing isn't, didn't come with, from me, but came from an Elizabeth Shively who's a professor at Gordon-Conwell, and I found it on uh, preaching, uh, workingpreacher.org. So I've got that out of the way now. Um, everything else in the sermon you're going to have to blame me for. These disciples now are hearing and are being taught about what is expected of them and what kind of message they're going to be taking out. They are not taking out a message of letting people know all the rules they have to follow. They're not being given a message of, here's how you find out if somebody has not been living up to the standard. They are being asked to provide a gospel that is communicating the blessedness that God wants for all of God's people. You might also think this is something that's really new. I wish I could say it is, but this isn't something that Jesus was the first to think about. We have the reading from Micah, and that reading from Micah is a glorious reading. There's three voices in that reading. It starts out with the prophet, and then the prophet turns it over to God speaking, and then it goes to the people to whom God is speaking, responding, and then it comes back to the prophet again to give it the tagline. Okay? It's important to kind of think of all those voices going on in there. Here the prophet says, God has a bone to pick with you. And then God says to the people, what have I done? How have I annoyed you so much that you ignore everything that I tell you? Why is it that you don't pay attention? Don't you remember all the leaders that I sent you? Don't you remember how I saved your bacon when those other peoples were attacking you? Don't you remember I even caused a donkey to talk in order to get the message of my love and blessing across to you? And then the people answer, Oh, if we could only give 10,000 jars of oil. Oh, if we could give a firstborn son for the sins of our soul. And the prophet comes back in and says, what are you talking about? You know what to do. You already have it in your power to do everything that God has ever asked of you, which is to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. If you would be a people who are blessed by God, you don't need to go someplace and take a class. You don't need to all of a sudden clean up your act and not, do, not make any more mistakes. All you need to do is the things that have been set out from thousands and thousands of years. Be just. Now, this is not aimed at you know, Susan Green. This is not a scripture that is aimed just for Susan. This is not a scripture that is aimed for any one of you individually out in the congregation. This is a scripture that is aimed at us, the people of God. This is inviting the people of God to claim what God has been telling the people of God forever and to live it. There's no secret. There's no real special trick to it. But it's that the people of God, this church, the community of St. Paul in the desert in the context of a larger church, that we would identify ourselves as the people who are looking for justice. That when something happens that is manifestly unfair, you'd hear about it from us, right? 
That's about doing justice. There's one of these right now. There is a, uh, in, in Uganda right now, I believe it is, there's Daniel Cato, who was a gay activist in Uganda, where they're still putting things like um, executing all homosexuals. They're still trying to get legislation like that. And he was murdered. And the government's saying, oh, that's just kind of an in-house homosexual thing. They're murdering people. They're murdering each other all the time. And the church in Uganda isn't standing up and saying, no. You think a culture that tries to place laws that say you should kill these people when you see them, and then somebody gets killed, but it's not because that law is there. Do justice. Now, there are all sorts of ways that we could do that. When we see things that are unfair, when we find that the mentally ill in our community are going to have their services cut because we don't want to pay any more taxes. And it's not that they can go someplace else to get services. It's just a matter of transferring them out onto the street completely where they will be here for lunch on Friday and will be at Roy's <coughs> service center where they will not be able to get the services they need because those have been cut off and taken away from them. Do justice. Love mercy. Love mercy. Be kind. When in doubt, uh, you know, I, I've invited at the annual meeting, I invited people to let me know how they prefer to get information, whether they're internet people or whether they like something printed. But, you know, I'm a little hesitant about sharing a lot of things on the internet because in uh, a few times when I have in the past, I've gotten some really scorching replies. And our internet culture tends to do that. Be kind. How do we respond to people with whom we disagree without letting it be known that we want to see them wiped off the face of the earth because they happen to have an opinion that's different than mine? Be kind. Walk humbly with God. It's not just walk humbly on your own. It's not humbly by yourself. It's how does the community of worshipers walk humbly and realize that in everything that we do, we're walking with God. And that in every word that we say, in every outreach that we make to someone else, in everything that we lift up, in everyone that we put down, we actually bring God with us when we do that. And I think a great deal of humility is needed so that we don't put ourselves in a place that we don't want to be with God. Because the last thing I want is for God to send a prophet to say, you people at St. Paul in the desert, I've got a controversy with you. I've got a bone to pick with you. What was it that I weary, so wearied you that you dislike worshiping in a beautiful place like this? What is it that is so appalling to you about praying for one another and caring for one another? Why is it that you aren't able to do as I've asked from time immemorial. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly with God. My prayer today is, is that each one of us would experience blessedness by knowing that God loves us and cares for us, has included us in that circle of blessing, and asks nothing more of us than that we do what God has always asked people to do, be just, be kind, and humbly walk with God. Amen.